If you've ever worried about somebody stealing your business idea, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Achimbo Artani. I'm a four-time entrepreneur and attorney. Today, I'm going to share five strategies on how to protect your business idea. Let's get right into it. First, you need to understand intellectual property. I'm going to break down intellectual property into four major things. Patents, trademarks, trade secrets, and copyright. So let's start off with patents. Patent is a government-issued license or right that grants you the exclusive authority to utilize a certain way of making or doing something. People think of it as covering inventions. Now, there is a lot of and outs on what can be patented and what can't. The best way to move forward is talking to a patent attorney, their specific type of attorney. If you're an inventor, if you created a specific type of process, this is a way that you can exclude other people from being able to utilize what you created without your permission. So that's a patent. That's mostly you're thinking about inventors or people who create processes for doing that. Trademarks. Trademark is about protecting your brand. It grants you the exclusive right for you to utilize your name, a design, etc. that only you or the people you allow can utilize that image or logo. Why is this done? The US government doesn't want people to be confused in terms of what company is producing. Why is the government interested in protecting you and giving you this right? Because the more they know that you have an exclusive association to a name, an image, a logo, the more you're willing to invest in that name, image, and logo. That means you're willing to build up your reputation which is better for the consumers. So this is the purpose of a trademark. Now, copyright. Copyright really comes into play for our writers, our authors, our singers, our musicians, etc. Copyright is protecting the creative works that you've made. So it might be a painting, it might be a poem, it may be a book, it may be a song. So copyright is that process. Copyright is one of the easier things to do. There's some grants that you're automatically given, but this is not legal advice. Please to talk to your specific IP intellectual property attorney and they can walk you through that as well. The last thing we'll talk about is trade secrets. So trade secrets is a little bit different than other protections. Trade secrets mean maybe there's a way of, that you do something, but you can't patent it. And so it's super important to your business and you do not want other people, your competitors to know how this is done, your clients to know how this is done, etc. That's a trade secret. Now, the way you protect trade secrets are really about your process, who has access to this, who you really trust with this information and also contracts, right? Non-disclosure agreements, non-compete agreements, etc. A good intellectual property attorney can walk you through these things, but that's the overarching ideas behind how can you legally protect your idea. One of the top two things to do, and it's not number two, to protect your business is execution, speed of execution. A lot of new entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners, a lot of investors, they think the best way to protect their business is to hide it, not tell anyone and just say, okay, I can't share it because if I share it, then it may be stolen. Actually, the best way to protect your business is to execute, execute, execute. People have had this idea before. Almost nothing is new under the sun. So your job is to execute and do it better than anybody can do it and build a moat around. So many people have great ideas. So many people have come up with stuff. The thing that differentiates successes from people who are not successful is the ability to execute. So speed of execution and quality of execution is huge in this. For example, coffee is not new. Italian type style coffee is not new. Starbucks, one of the biggest companies in the world, they didn't just, they didn't start in the 1900s. They didn't start in the 1800s. So Starbucks iterated on an idea that was already out there and they just executed better. So it's not always is about having the first idea. It's about being the best to execute and being fast to execute. If you're not the best, you better be the first to execute. How do you execute well as a business owner? How do you execute well to make your idea succeed? Smart business practices. The right strategies on top of the execution is really going to help you take off. So what are smart business tactics? Don't share with everyone. It's not for everyone. Share with advisors, maybe some people in the industry, maybe some key clients. Share and get feedback from them. Or there's different levels of people that you're going to share things do as you're scaling your company. Maybe you're not telling the whole company the next 10 years of strategy. You're only telling it with three people in your leadership team. So you're not always telling everybody the same thing. You got have to be strategic in who has access to what information. Then in resource allocation, who are you allowing to do certain things for you? If a lot of things where you're worried is who has access to your clients? It's sometimes you have the idea you're processing it, but now you're out in the marketplace and you're giving somebody who you've seen is a bit untrustworthy. You're giving them access to key clients. Clients, that's not wise. That's not good strategy. Who can you really trust? And then only they have access to key clients or only they have access to key vendors, key resources, etc. So being strategic and smart business practice is one of the ways you re helps you really execute well and go forward 
into the future. Document everything. Document who you talk to, document what you do, document your process. This is crucial. If you ever end up in litigation, this will help you out. Or if you end up in arbitration, this will help you also document everything so you can remember and you can go back to your notes and keep copies of records, communication, etc. Build a strong team. It's so important. You cannot execute it all by yourself. By building a strong team, you're building some people who have your back. You're building some people who are able to execute better than you. And you're giving yourself more time to focus on things only you can do well that are super important to the business. So focus on building the right team. A solid team is a great line of defense when you're executing. Build that team and knock it out. Next up, they've been hacked. One of the biggest things that we've seen lately, uh, the crowd strike thing just happened a few weeks. That shut down airports, that shut down businesses, that shut down governments. You have to have good cybersecurity. You have to have good digital security. So are your passwords lying around? Is there a firewall in between you and key things that need to get out? Or is there a firewall in between people on the outside and key documents, key research, key plans? How are you protecting your business, right? How are you protecting your communication? So investing in firewalls and antivirus programs, making sure, hey, you're not going into certain websites on our computer. You're not utilizing certain Wi-Fi's on our computer. This is why I, I come from a legal background. So in law, law firms are super protective about their client stuff. So you have to take a similar approach and it's going to scale. Maybe you don't have this all at the beginning, but you'll scale into, okay, I'm always adding to my security, right? I'm always becoming, because the bigger you get, the bigger you are target, right? If you're small, you may fly under the radar. Be cautious on social media. Don't always share where you're going. Don't show when you're going, etc. Also do have dual verification. One of the worst things that can happen is if you're creative or if you have a big influence, somebody hacks into your account and takes over. Do you have a plan for that? How are you going to protect yourself if somebody takes over your YouTube, your Instagram, your TikTok, etc.? So protecting yourself and making sure you have additional layers of security, especially for your key resources, is something you must do. So allocate resources to that. So we talked about execution, we talked about IP, we talked about strategy. Now you do this, all of this to get to building a competitive advantage. How do you make it so that your competitors can't compete with you? What is your moat? What is your edge? You do all everything in business so that you can have a competitive We don't want to compete. Everybody says, hey, you want we want to compete in a way we want to have access to information, but you do business in so that you're so far ahead, you don't have to fight over trivial matters. But how can you create an edge in the market? How can you Make it so people don't even consider your competitors. What can you do with that? Constantly innovate, right? Speed of, hey, I want to work with this company because they're always on the leading edge. But some, they've created a process that helps them always be ahead of the curve. So constant innovation is a key thing to do. For more strong customer service. Imagine, aren't there certain restaurants, certain places you go, they just make you feel special where it doesn't matter if it's half off at another place. You will never leave this place because just the way they treat you. That can be a competitive edge. How is your relationship? Do you know? Know their names, you know their kids' names, you know exactly what they want and when they want it, and you provide, give them over and beyond. There's a great quote, I think it's from Jim Rohn. There's no traffic on the extra mile. Go the extra mile for your customers. Go the extra mile. And when you do that and they constantly see you're going the extra mile in, in a world where so many people want to take, 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 that's going to be a competitive advantage for you. Develop a priority process, develop a systems, find ways to do things more efficiently where it brings your cost down so you can offer better pricing to your customers. Be innovative figure out how to get more liquidity or better cash flow so now you can offer better payment terms to your customers right so you're the one company that can actually say hey you know what you don't have to pay us for 60 days you don't have to pay us for 45 days and think about how important that would be to some businesses now i'm not saying this is for everyone every business model is different but there's so many ways you can build a competitive advantage just constantly think about innovating constantly put yourself in your customer's shoes and think about what is really important to them that we can win on and sequence it now sequencing is a whole nother video the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones who focus on execution and delivering value to their customers. As someone who's been on both sides as an entrepreneur and as an investor, I can tell you a well-executed idea almost always outshines a well-guarded secret. So yes, protect your idea, but more importantly, get out there and make it happen. That's it for today. Comment below your favorite strategy and let us know how you're gonna move forward now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is Life in Business with the Tiny Advisors. I'll see you next time.